Okay, I'd like to continue the game between Tarsh and Mises. And uh, Black just played its uh, 17th move of King takes D8. And I just finished explaining the uh, points of the position. And now White plays Rook on A to D1. So should Black go to the Queen side to help defend or to the King side where it looks like it may have less problems because if it goes to the Queen side, the problem is, is that Black's going to be able to get a rook down here and probably uh, prevent uh, uh, Black from developing, and we'll see that one of the continuations. So um, uh, Black does go king to e8, and now white plays king to d3. The king plans on coming to the queen side, where will help support the pawn push. And now how should, uh, and giving check, so how should... Uh, Black reply, well, let's just cover that line of what happens when the king goes to the queen side. Well, let's say it did. Let's say play king to d8, just as a variation, not the actual move in the game. So king to d8, then the king could come to c4. Then the um, black's force to play king to c8, and then rook to d8 check. Then rook, I mean king to b7, as you see, is this rook is preventing development, and this rook could probably just drop down here where we'll end up picking up this uh, knight here. So that's one of the reasons why originally didn't, black did not go to the uh, queen side. But in this position, it played knight on knight to e7, uh, sort of giving a self pin. And then white played king to c4. Black played h5, trying to get the rook out, develop the rook. Rook to uh, d3, planning on doubling the rooks and winning the knight. Black plays knight to b8, so the so that the knight could come to here, where we'll, we'll, we'll give defense to the knight on e7. So black uh, white plays rook on d to e3, doubling. Black plays knight on b to c6, protecting the knight. White plays b4, obviously with the plan to play b5, driving the knight away. White will win the um, the uh, the knight on e7. Um, black plays f6 with the idea of now that uh, can just play the knight to here to e5, putting it into uh, trying to win the knight on e7. But uh, white plays f4, preventing the knight from coming the e5. Now the king comes up to f7, so now the knight can move. There'll be no more um, uh, plans of winning that knight, or the knight is free to move. It's out of the pen. White now can, goes about its plan of promoting the a-pawn, so it plays a4. Black plays rook to b8, attacking this pawn twice. White simply plays c3, protecting the protecting the pawn. Black will play rook to d8, seeing that uh, you know its choices are leave the rook over here and try to defend the queen side pawns, which is probably a losing endeavor, or to play rook to d8, trying to get the rook into the game for some type of counterplay. White plays rook to d3, contesting the open file, which is always a good idea. And then um, black probably has nothing better else to do and actually um, exchanges off the rooks, probably hoping that its two knights can outbeat the rook. But we'll see that the uh, rook will be much su more superior in this ending. Black plays king to e8. The king is rushing over to the queen side to prevent the pawn from promoting. White plays um, pawn a5. King to d7. King continued to come over the queen side. And now a6. And it'd be probably be tempting for um, black to play uh, king to, to c8, but then white has a response of uh, uh, c5, undermining the defender of the knight on e7. Not a good idea. So um, black plays knight to d5, bringing, moving the knight and bringing it over the queen side. 
rook to a1. It's going to hopefully push the pawn home. Black plays knight a7, blocking the pawn. And now, maybe I should have said with uh, d5 that the this pawn was under attack. Uh, but uh, we back up. Um, when it came here, it was attacking the pawn on f4. That's one white one here. Black has no time to capture the pawn, so it blocks. And now white plays g3 to support the pawn. Black plays c6 to prevent uh, um, b5. And now uh, the idea is for white is to get these pawns rolling like this. Um, white plays work to a4 with the idea that it plans to play this and it wants to protect the b4 pawn when it does that. Uh, black plays knight on knight to b6, attacking the rook. The rook comes to a5, getting out of line of fire and also attacking the pawn over here. Black plays g6, c4, continuing with the plan of pushing the pawns up. And now black really has no good moves. Uh, uh, there are some variations I can cover, but I'm running out of time. But black really has no good moves, so it's just going to play some waiting moves. So knight to b to c8. Um, and now um, white decides to change its plan. So if it's going to move the king in here like this to support the pawns. It's going to move the rook over to an open file or something, maybe the e1, and bring the rook in from the other side. So rook to a1 brings it down, knight to b6, just a waiting move, king to d4. Knight goes back to c8, once again a waiting move, king to c5. And now black plays king to c7, getting the king over to the queen side more to protect. Rook comes to e1, b6, knight uh, to b6. And now black play, uh, white plays rook to e7 check. And then black plays knight to d7, sort of actually um, uh, blocking and giving check to the king. <laughs> Interesting. And now the coup d'etat, or the coup de, coup de gras of uh, rook takes the knight check and actually black resigned in this position because of the following continuation. The continuation would probably be um, king takes rook, b5, pawn takes, pawn takes, king to c8, obviously not king to c5 because of b5, b6 check, king to c8, b6, and the knight has nowhere to go, king to b8, b takes a7, King takes a7, and then actually then the king just comes over to the king side. It's going to come in here and eat all these pawns over here and win. So that is the game between Torsh and Mises.